What I would like to talk about this morning is courage. Uh, we live in interesting times at the moment. One of my big drivers in setting out to row across oceans 10 years ago was because I was so concerned about the state of the world, particularly the environment. And the world hasn't really got into a, a better place since then. So as we face the aftermath of Brexit and the prospect of Trumpism, please no, <laughs> we need more courage than ever in the world. And I speak as someone who started out not even a little bit courageous. What really brought it home to me that I was maybe not on the right track was an exercise that I did one evening after a particularly bad day in the office when I'd found this exercise in a self-help book, I think. And the idea was to write two versions of my own obituary, the one that I wanted and the one that I was heading for if I carried on as I was. And so when I was writing the one that I wanted, I thought about the obituaries that I really enjoyed reading in the newspaper. And I loved hearing about those colourful characters who seemed to have crammed several different lifetimes into one. They'd constantly reinvented themselves and they may succeed or they may fail at any particular venture, but even if they failed, they would pick themselves up and dust themselves off and, and try again. They were the kind of people who really seemed to get out there and live life courageously and adventurously and not being held back by all these self-limiting beliefs. And as I wrote it, it was almost like a door had opened into a parallel universe where I was living the life that I was supposed to be living. It actually felt weirdly real, considering how different it was from the life that I was actually living at that time. And then I wrote the second version, which is where I was heading if I carried on as I was. And it looked nice and safe and secure. But when I looked at those two versions, I realised that I didn't want to carry on as I was and that I needed to find the courage to get out there and really live life in a very different way. And it was at around this time that I had my environmental awakening and became passionately concerned about what we're doing, not just to the planet, but to ourselves in terms of our health and our happiness as human beings. And I felt like I just had to do something, but I had no idea what. I was just a recovering management consultant. What could I possibly offer? And then fate intervened, depending on your, your worldview. By chance, I met a guy who had rowed across the Atlantic with, of all people, his mother. So, in my mind, up until that point, I thought to be an adventurer, you had to be at least six foot tall and have a big bushy beard. And so to find out that someone's mum had rowed across an ocean started the seeds of a very dangerous idea. I realised that this was ticking so many boxes. This was the answer I'd been looking for. I was going to row across oceans and use that as my platform through my blogs and my talks and my books to raise awareness of our environmental challenges. I had to do training courses in first aid and celestial navigation and meteorology and marine communications and sea survival. But it was so exciting. I was one of those really obnoxious people that was bouncing out of bed full of energy first thing in the morning, just absolutely raring to go to make my dream into a reality. When I was out there rowing, once in a while I'd have to jump out of my boat, which made me quite nervous. The ocean's on average about two miles deep, which I really tried not to think about too much. I would have to jump over with my little scraper and scrape off these gooseneck barnacles, which are surprisingly tenacious little buggers, and send them down into the depths of the ocean. But I knew that if I didn't get rid of these little problems, they were going to become much bigger problems and create an awful lot of drag on my hull and stop me from getting to my destination. And although I uh, describe myself as a solo rower, in a way I feel a bit fraudulent saying that because I, even though I was alone in the boat, in many ways I was the tiny tip of a very big iceberg of support. Over the seven years I was rowing across oceans, literally thousands of people supported me in many ways, from sponsoring a mile to sending me supportive blog comments when I was really struggling out there, to helping me get my boat ready. But I can remember how I felt as I rowed out from that little marina in the Canary Islands just off the coast of Africa to row 3,000 miles 
across the Atlantic. After about six hours on the boat, I was hanging over the sides, just throwing up my lunch, thinking, oh my God, what the hell have I done? A lot of people had told me that after the first couple of weeks, it would get a lot easier. They lied, but at least <laughs> it was enough to give me the hope that it would get better, that um, helped me to keep on going. Um, grit, grit, love this word. Um, it's got several different meanings. Uh, there was certainly an awful lot of gritting of teeth went on um, on that boat. Um, there's also that tenacity, that perseverance, that ability to keep on going when the going gets tough. But I also like it in the sense of a little bit of sand, like the bit of grit that gets into an oyster shell. And it's really irritating to the oyster, so what does it do with it? It coats it in this beautiful substance and takes that irritant and makes it into a beautiful pearl. Screen therapy. Um, not good if you work in an open plan office, um, but brilliant when you're on a rowboat on your own in the middle of an ocean and just frustrated as hell about your lack of progress. Um, probably the scariest thing that ever happened to me was one time when I jumped overboard to go back and fetch a boat hook that I'd accidentally dropped over the side of the boat and I nearly ended up losing the boat. As I was swimming that way to collect the boat hook, the boat was drifting that way. And um, it was a pretty tense 15 minutes or so while I swam desperately trying to catch up with the boat again. After 103 very long days at sea, I finally made it in to Antigua in the Caribbean. And I have never been so happy to see dry land or people. I hadn't seen another person for a couple of months by this point since the last visit from the, the support boat. In the run-up to the row, whenever I was asked, why do you want to do this thing? I would mention the environmental mission and I would also say, and I want to get outside my comfort zone. Sounding very intrepid. And it was only once I was out on the ocean and being extremely uncomfortable that the penny dropped and I realised that getting outside your comfort zone, by definition, has to be uncomfortable. <laughs> And looking back now, I know that if everything had gone according to plan, I wouldn't have learned anywhere near as much as I did. I wouldn't have grown anywhere near as much as I did. So this is what it feels like to arrive on dry land after three and a half months alone at sea, the last 24 days of which I had no communications. It was just wonderful to feel humanity again. There were school children singing, there were... Uh, the the uh, sirens on the, the, the yachts were sounding. Uh, it was just this wonderful sense of occasion and party. And of course, it was lovely to get that long-awaited hug from my mother. I'm happy to report that that experience on the Atlantic, brutal though it was at the time, really had stood me in good stead. I'd taken a long, hard look at what had worked and what hadn't, and I'd really refined my processes and particularly in terms of the psychology of taking on these really big challenges. Through writing the book and giving talks about it, I'd really absorbed those lessons about how to cope better, how to take it just one day or one rowing shift at a time, or sometimes just the next 10 oar strokes, just to keep on going, about how to actually welcome the struggles, knowing that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and knowing that I really could achieve almost anything if I could just hang on in there, if I could just persevere. So I hope that as I've been speaking, you've been relating my story sort of metaphorically to the challenges that you face in your work. I think there are many parallels. I chose a rather unusual domain arena in which to undertake my challenge, but the more time that I've had since I finished rowing in 2011 and applied those same lessons to the challenges of dry land, the more universally applicable I think they are.